Morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're looking at uh, section 3.2, differentiability. And actually, what we're going to be looking at today are a few different examples <clears throat> of how a derivative does not exist. And what this is, is there's actually four different ways for a derivative to not exist, two of which we've, we've already talked about. But the first one here is a corner. Okay, and a corner is exactly explicitly where the left and right side derivatives are not equal. Okay, I have to calibrate my screen. Okay, some of these corners that we talked about here, um, we looked at a corner on an absolute value function, and I'm going to circle and say some piecewise functions. And graphically, what we saw with our absolute value was we had that cute little sharp point right here of non-differentiability because the derivative from the left was not equal to the derivative from the right. The slope on the left as we approached that sharp point was different from the slope on the right as we appro approached that sharp point, which makes the derivative not exist. Graphically, a couple more we got. Um, piecewise functions, okay, there's lots of different ways we can do that, but, you know, the, the cool little guy here, I like to call it the shark fin piecewise function, got a sharp point right there, okay? There's lots of different ways to do that, okay, this isn't a shark fin, but it's a sharp point, okay? The slope, as we approach the left, as we approach that sharp point from the left and the right, the slope is different on both sides, making that derivative not exist. That is a corner, okay? Back in the day when I first started learning about this next thing is a cusp. Okay, I used to think corners and cusps were the same thing, but they're actually completely different creatures, okay? A corner is where the left and right derivatives are not equal to each other, but they are a finite value. They equal something. A cusp. A cusp is when you approach infinity from one side and negative infinity from the other side. Okay? An example of a cusp. We're going to go here. We're going to graph this little guy. Uh, pull up your calculator, and you're going to need your calculator for today's lesson, so you might as well get that little bugger. But what a cusp looks like, and before I do this, okay, we have to also remember what our fractional exponents look like, okay? So another way to enter um, y equals x to the two-thirds power, remember that is the same as the cubed root of x squared, okay? Fractional exponents are like trees. The roots are in the denominator. They're in the bottom, okay? So I can enter this in my calculator one of, one of two different ways, okay? I can go with that exponent or um, I can use uh, that cute little root button here, right there, where I have the cubed root of x squared, okay? That's the exact same thing as x to the two-thirds power, whichever way you like to enter it. It really doesn't matter. But if I hit enter, okay, I get this cusp. Okay, and what this cusp is, is if I kind of, I think if I kind of shrink these sides in a little bit, like if I came into like negative four, and if I came into four, ah, come on, give me a four. That didn't really shrink it the way I wanted to shrink it. Uh, so let's go back, let's go back. It doesn't really matter. Um, what a cusp is, is as I'm coming through here, okay, with this one, I'm going to grab my red. As I approach the slope from the left side here, I can see these tangents are getting very, very steep. The left side is going to negative infinity. My right side is going to positive infinity. And I don't know if I stretch it this way. Can I see that a little bit better if I went to 3? and maybe negative three, okay, I can see that those slopes, as I get closer and closer, okay, they are getting steeper and steeper and steeper, meaning one side of zero 
the slope is approaching negative infinity. The other side, the slope is approaching positive infinity. And that's what a cusp is. And a cusp is different from a corner, okay? Because these tangent lines are getting very, very vertical, not finite. They're getting very vertical, going to infinity and negative infinity. That's what makes it a cusp, okay? They're different from a corner. So if I looked at this graph for my cusp, I got this little, come on, baby. I got there, and I got my cusp coming out this way, and I got my cusp coming out that way. So what I see is, is I see non-differentiable at x equals 0, okay? So I have corners and I have cusps. Cusps, again, the slope is approaching positive and negative infinity from each side. They're getting steeper and steeper and going vertical, okay? Another way a derivative does not exist is number 3 in your note sheet there. That would be a vertical tangent. Okay, the slope approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity. Um, doesn't matter which one it is. And a good example of a vertical tangent is the cubed root of x. So if we look at that cubed root of x here, let's graph that little rascal. I'm going to go tab, and I'm going to go up. And all I'm going to do is... Go in there and get rid of that little guy. There's my cubed root of x. I don't like my point 2. Make that 1. And those are all 1. But as I can come in here, okay, I can see what's happening is my tangent line is my tangent line's getting steeper, 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 steeper. And then it goes straight vertical right at x equals 0. And then it starts getting less steep. It's always positive, but in this case, um, that vertical tangent is approaching at zero. It's approaching a vertical tangent. What is the slope of a vertical line? The slope of a vertical line is undefined. That's why the derivative does not exist there, regardless if the point exists there, because it's vertical, meaning it's undefined. So let's get out of here. So we got a vertical tangent, and our cute little example of a vertical tangent is my x cubed, where I kind of come off this way, and then this way kind of comes down. But my tangent gets very, very vertical in here, okay? It gets super steep, and then it goes vertical for a split second, okay, just for an instant, and then it starts flattening out and it remains positive. And either way, because it's approaching a vertical tangent, it would not exist, okay? The last one I'm looking at here, okay, we've talked about this one as well, is a discontinuity, okay? This is a theorem we had before, okay? If f is not continuous at x equals a, then it has no derivative at x equals a. Well, think about it. If the point does not exist on a curve, there's no point of tangency that can exist on the curve, Therefore, there's no derivative because the derivative at a point of tangency is the slope of the curve. And if the curve doesn't exist at that point, okay, neither could the derivative. And I'm not going to go too much in depth into this, but your proof is taking you all the way back <coughs> into geometry. Okay, What we have to do is we have to think of this theorem. This theorem is our conditional statement, and this theorem we got earlier in the year if f has a derivative at x equals a, then f is continuous at x equals a. What that means is, if a function has a derivative at a point, then the function is continuous at that point. Well, all the way back into geometry, we had uh, conditional statements, converse statements, inverse statements, contrapositive statements. I am not going to go all the way into all of them. However, if the if a conditional statement is true, this is my conditional statement right here, my theorem. If that's true, and we just have to accept it's true because it's a theorem, the contrapositive is also a conditional statement, but the contrapositive is also true. And I don't know if you remember right in your conditional statements, inverse statements, contrapositives, but the contrapositive would be if f is not continuous at a, then f 
ha has no derivative at A. Okay, well, in my theorems, we had P's and we had Q's. Again, like I said, I'm not going into that, but if P, then Q. If the hypothesis is true, then the, then the uh, end of the statement is true. Okay, so we have if P implies then Q. And when we took that into a contrapositive, we said, if the opposite of Q is not true, then the opposite of P is not true. Okay, therefore, bottom line, if a function is not continuous at a point, we can't take a derivative at the point. So, our four ways that a derivative cannot exist. It's a corner. The derivative is a different value from each side. We have a cusp where the derivative on the left and the right, one goes to positive infinity, the other goes to negative infinity. We have vertical tangents where my curve is continuous at this point, but the point of tangency is perfectly vertical line. If it's vertical, it doesn't exist because it's an undefined slope. We're dividing by zero, rise over run. And we also have a discontinuity. If a function is not continuous at a point, the derivative cannot exist at the point, okay? So let's tear into a couple examples here of what we're gonna do, okay? Numerical derivatives on the Inspire, okay? I just wanna go through and show you how to find these. I've shown, we, we, we've done this a little bit. So let's go grab our calculator here quick. And how we've done these is we're gonna enter x cubed minus two x. So I'm gonna come back here, come up. I'm gonna enter my x cubed minus 2x. We're going to get that little <coughs> point there. I'm going to take this back to a standard window so it looks nice. And we found numerical derivatives from the graph. And the way we did that was we came to our graph and we said menu, analyze graph, derivative, and then the position, what we did is we entered our number, like if we wanted the position at 1, we'd type a 1 and then hit enter, and it gave me the slope of 1. If I wanted the position at 2, well, then I got to come back in. Menu, analyze, derivative, position x equals 2, and what it does is it gives me the slope at that point. It gives me the slope at the point of tangency, okay? And what I'm trying to point out here is when it comes around to the AP test, there are three things you will be 100% expected to do with your technology or your graphing calculator, okay? One of those things is to be able to graph a function and adjust your windows to uh, an appropriate viewing window to utilize the graph in a problem. Most people can do that already. The second thing you're going to have to be able to use your CAS calculator for is to evaluate a numerical derivative. And there's multiple ways to do that. And the graph is one. And the third thing you're going to have to be able to do is evaluate a definite integral in the end. But that won't come until probably third quarter when we do that. Now, I also want you to understand you do not have to do this in the graph. Okay? We can also do this on a calculator page. So if I got rid of this we can do this on a calculator page, okay? And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use the derivative template or menu. I like to use the menu, to be honest with you, to find the derivative at a point for the numerical uh, value. So if I came back to my calculator and I added myself a calculator page, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say menu, and because we're in calculus class, we're gonna go to calculus. And we're not going to find derivative, okay? This, this is going to give us our, our um, algebraic derivative. If we want a derivative at a point, it's going to come up. Now, understand your calculator identifies everything in function form, meaning f of x. So my variable is typically always x. And if I hit, whoa, go back, my value, where do we want this value? Let's say we wanted it at f of 2. So I'm going to say, okay, 
And what this does is this comes up and it says find the derivative. Now in the parentheses, I have to type my function. And I'm going to say x cubed. And I'm going to say minus 2x. And then this is going to... This is going to evaluate my derivative of my function x cubed minus 2x exactly explicitly at x equals negative 2. I think on the graph it showed it was 10, and it's 10. It gives me my numerical value at x equals 2, okay? Now, if I didn't use that one, and I came here and I went menu, calculus, derivative, and I said x, and then in here I type my function, I'm going to get an x cubed okay, minus 2x. Okay, If I don't have my such that x equals 2 in there, this is just going to give me my algebraic derivative. Well, why'd you show us that? We can do that. I don't care. If it's in a non-calculated part of the test, you've got to be able to do it. Now, this is my algebraic derivative. Watch, if I take 2 and I plug 2 in there, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12, minus 2 gives me 10. So if I have my algebraic derivative, I can evaluate it the same way. And I'm showing you this algebraic derivative through the menu calculus number 1, not at a point, because we're going to be using that beginning Monday to develop some patterns on our derivatives to learn our rules on the derivatives, okay? So there's those two ways you're going to be able to do that with your technology. So let's figure out what we need to do. So if we came here, okay, our problems. We're going to do all of these problems with technology, meaning with our calculator. We're going to find numerical. We're going to have our calculator numerically find it so we don't have to plug it into the big ugly equation. However, you have to show your analysis, meaning don't just give me the equation of the tangent line at x equals 5. Show me how you came up with that, meaning the following. Well, if I need to write the equation of, of, a, tan, of a, line tan, a line of tangency at x equals 0, I need to have point. I need a point, and I need the slope, okay? Well, the point is pretty easy. The point is just going to be f of 5, and that's simple to come in here. f of 5, well, that's a square root of 9, so f of 5 is 3. Now, my slope, watch my notation. That's f prime of 5. Okay, and that's a square root function. If I had to plug it into my limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a, okay, all over h, that's going to take me a little bit of time to do it. So we're going to utilize our technology to find this. So let's grab your calculator again. And let's come in here. Let's do menu, calculus, derivative at a point. And x, so I'm going to tab, we want it at x equals 5, and it'll do first derivative, second derivative, nth derivative, it'll do what, whatever it wants me to do. I'm going to hit OK. So notice it automatically puts my x in there, because my function's in terms of x, it automatically puts where I want it. Now all I have to do is type in my square root of x plus 4 for my function. So I'm going to give it the old control above there, x plus 4. And I'm going to hit enter, and oh crumb, it's giving me a decimal. I don't want a decimal. Here, you got to come back in here. You got to go back to your home menu. We got to go to our settings because we want our document settings to be exact. Bam, because we want fractions. Okay, so now let me come back to my current document. If I came back up and highlighted that little rascal and hit enter, aha, 1 sixth. So my derivative at x equals 5 is 1 sixth. My slope is rise 1, run 6. My slope is 1 sixth. So I get equals 1 sixth. Okay. Now I have my slope, I have my point. All I need to do is write my equation, my tangent line. I can say, y minus 3 equals 1 6 times x minus 5, and I am dumbzo. Okay, I have shown my analysis. I've shown my math how I got the point. I've shown my calculus the slope at 5 is a 6. This is my analysis. I understand 
we're using technology. However, your analysis is how did you get the slope? Oh, that's F prime at five. This is what we need to do. Okay, because I also want you to understand your calculator, it'll do this. It'll go menu. Uh, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Calculus. Uh, and I can come right down here to tangent line. And it's going to give me my tangent line. There's three things I have to type in. I have to type in first my function, which would be square root x plus 4. Come out. And then i got to put a comma. I need to tell it what my variable in my equation is, which is x. And then I have to put a comma and tell it where I want the tangent line equation for. And I put it, hit a 5. Blammo. It just gives me y. It gives it me in slope-intercept form. y equals 1 6 x plus 13 6. But if you wrote that down right away, obviously you showed no analysis. And there's really no reason to tweak it into that. We can leave it in any form. Okay. So we want to be able to show our analysis. How did I get the point? How did I get the slope? Okay. There's my tangent line. Okay. And underneath here, okay, number two says compare left and right hand derivatives to show that the function is not differentiable at x equals 2. Well, <clears throat> I'm giving you way too much information here. And what I want you to understand, typically a question like this would just be worded like this. Find f prime of 2 or state why it does not exist and then they'll give you the function. Well, there's ways we need to be able to do this. There's basically four ways that the derivative does not exist. Okay, It is a corner, or it's a cusp, it has a discontinuity, or it has a ver vertical tangent. One of those has to happen. Now, the easiest two to prove okay, are number one, which is a corner, and number four, a discontinuity. Well, let's, let's look at this once, okay? Always look for continuity first because if a function does not exist, if a function is not continuous at a point, the function cannot have a derivative at a point. It's very possible to have a non-continuous function where the left hand and the right hand derivatives equal each other, but then you're falling into the trap. You always have to make sure it's continuous, okay? Well... What we're going to do is we're going to come through and we're, we're going to show whether it's continuous. If it's continuous, we're going to show if the left-hand derivative equals the right-hand derivative. Okay, so number one, is it continuous? Okay, now continuous, remember, continuity is banking off of my f function, okay, not the derivative. And to be continuous, think about it f of 2 has to exist. My only point of discontinuity is that is that right there at 2, okay? Now, the only place it can be discontinuous is at 2. Well, does f of 2 exist? Well, obviously, f of 2 exists because it's included in the top piece of the function, okay? If I can show f of 2 is coming together at the same point, meaning f of 2 is, what is that, 2 squared is 4 uh, times negative 2, what is that, negative 8, plus 10, I know f of 2 is 2, okay, so f of 2 exists, we can see that because it's included on that piece. The next thing is, is the limit and limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x, does that equal the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x? Now, please understand we can shorthand this. How I can shorthand this is I can say, f of 2 from the left equals. This is kind of denoting to me right here this limit process in a way, okay? So what is the limit from the left? Well, when I look up here, I can see, get rid of that, I can see, well, x is less than 2, that's the left side, greater than 2, that's my right side. So what is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left? Well, we kind of just did that up there. It was negative 8 plus 10 equal 2, so the limit was 2. What's my limit of 2 on the right 
And that's of my f function there. That's denoting this notation all for me. So what is that? Well, that's negative 3 times 2. That's negative 6 plus 8 equals 2. Okay, well, my left and right limits equal each other. It equals f of 2. And what that is telling me is, okay, therefore, f is continuous at x equals 2. Okay, here is my analysis for continuity. So it's continuous, but now, number two, if the derivative exists, does the left and right derivative exist? Okay, well, calculus would be left derivative. Does that equal the right derivative? D subscript x denotes derivative, okay? I can show this mathematically at the same time, okay? What is f? prime of 2 from the left, and what is f prime of 2 from the right, okay? One of these two is super easy to get. Well, the derivative from the right, I shouldn't need my calculator for because this is linear. The slope of the line is the same everywhere, so the limit from the right side is going to be negative 3, but we do need our calculator for that part there. So let's pull that little bugger up, and let's find the derivative as x approaches 2 from the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to give it the menu, calculus, derivative at a point, and I'm going to say x, and then I'm going to come down. We want it at 2. I understand we're coming 2 from the left, but we want it at, at that 2 value. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. Now I need to type in my function which would have been negative 2x squared plus 10. And, whoa, my derivative from the left equals negative 8. So what I'm going to do is my derivative from the left equals negative 8. Okay? So what does that mean? Well, that means my derivative from the left is different from my derivative to the, from the right that means I have a corner at x equals 2. Okay, f is a corner. So f prime of 2 equals, it does not exist because f prime of 2 from the left is unequal to f prime of 2 from the right, meaning corner. Okay. I need my conclusion, I need my reason why, either one of those would work, but I also need my analysis of why the derivative isn't there, okay? We need all those things with it. Now we're going to move on to the next example here and show that f has no derivative at x equals 0, okay? Well, typically... That's going to say find f prime of 0 or state why it does not exist. Well, we can do that. Can we do that? I think we can do that. So first and foremost, we need to look at number one, continuity. Is it continuous there? If it's continuous, the derivative will possibly exist. If it's not continuous, it won't exist. So what is my limit as I approach zero, right, and our, oh, as I approach zero from the left, and what is my basic limit zero from the right? Okay, here's your analysis. You can show it to me this way. Well, as I'm coming in left and right, <clears throat> get rid of that, no greater than zero, that's right, less than zero, that's left, well, what is the limit from the left? Well, if I plug a 0 in there, my limit's 1. If I plug a 0 in the bottom one, what's my limit? My limit's 0. Whoa. Not continuous at x equals 0. Therefore, f prime of 0 does not exist because not continuous. 
okay? That's what you would have to show. Now, notice how I started with number one, <clears throat> because if you actually go through here and you find the limit from the left and the limit from the right of the derivative, okay, the left and right derivatives in this case, they're going to equal each other. But the, the limit, the, the derivative doesn't exist because there's a break in the graph, okay? Bottom line, what I have here is this is a vertex here at 1, and this side's opening up, and then this side is the side going down. This, this limit is going to be approaching 0 for a horizontal tangent. This limit, this derivative, is going to be approaching 0 for a horizontal tangent. However, there's a big break in the graph. It's not continuous, therefore the derivative does not exist, okay? Determine if f prime of 2 exists. Well, that means find the derivative, okay? Well, what is continuity? Is it continuous? Big fat question mark. Well, if it is, here's my right side, here's my left side. If it is, f, as I approach 2 from the left, has to equal f as I approach 2 from the right, okay? These are limits. I'm doing the limit. So if I plug 2 in here, what am I going to have? I'm going to have 4 minus 6 plus 5. What does that, that give me? 3. And then as I come in from the right, if I plug that 2 in there, I get 4 minus 1. I get 3. So therefore, continuous at x equals 2, okay, because the left and right limits are equaling to each other, those two equal, okay. How about my left derivative, does that equal my right derivative? And the only way to find that out is to find it out at the same point. What the heck is f prime of 2 from the left? What is f prime of 2 from the right? Okay. Again, this one's going to be one of these two is easy. In this case, it's linear. Okay. This is going to be 2 from the right. What is it from the left? We've got to come into our technology. We're going to say menu, calculus, derivative at a point. When x equals 2, we're after here. Are we at 2? Yes, we're at 2. And then we're going to say, OK. Now we need to type that side in, x squared minus 3x plus 5. Well, what is the right side? Ooh, the other derivative there. Ah, I hate it when I do that. It irritates me. Click down on my calculator here. Okay, so this side was 1. So. Is it continuous? No. If my derivative, if these two equal different numbers, what is happening there? What is happening there? Corner. Okay? So, f prime of 2 does not exist because I can say the left derivative is unequal to the right derivative or corner at x equals 2. Notice if I say there's a corner at x equals 2, I have to show that corner analysis, analysis with conclusion and reason for conclusion. Either one would work. Okay, as I come in here to number five, check this one out. This is where everybody says, oh, okay, well, finally, yeah. Well, it's piecewise function. It's got to be a corner. I got a quadratic coming into a line. It's got to be a corner. Be careful. Number one, is it continuous? Question mark. Well, that's saying my point of discontinuity is going to be at one. Is it continuous at one? Because this is quadratic, line, they're 
continuous or smooth everywhere, only where they may come together. <clears throat> so what is my limit as I approach one from the left? What is my limit as I approach one from the right? And again, I know f of one exists, okay? f of one exists because I'm including already on there. And if f of one exists, f of one is gonna equal the same thing as the right-handed limit there. So if the right and the left exist, kudos to us, we got it. So all I'm gonna do to get the limit of the function, I'm plugging a one in there, that gives me three minus two plus four. Three minus two plus four, hmm, what is that? That's, seven, that's five, okay? So it equals five. And here I get four plus one, that equals five. Okay, therefore, it's continuous at x equals one because my left and right limits equal each other. Is it differentiable? It's continuous there. Is it differentiable? Okay, does my left hand derivative equal my right hand? That didn't want a comma. I wanted, does my left hand equal my right hand derivative? So I'm looking for what is f prime of one from the left? What is f prime from one to the right? Notice, looking at derivatives, check out my notation. Looking for continuity, check out my notation. Original function, f prime or derivative. Again, as I'm looking here, okay, uh, <clears throat> the left side is going to be the easy one, again, because it's a line. What's my derivative from the right? Well, we don't want to waste all kinds of time finding these derivatives at a point algebraically, so that's why we're going to use our technology. We're going to calculate derivative at a point. The point we wanted is at 1. Our function that we want it at is going to be 3x squared. Yeah, not 3x2, 3x squared uh, minus 2x plus 4. Hmm. My derivative is 4. Okay, so. Oh, the derivative from the right and the derivative from the left are both 4. Well, what's my conclusion? Therefore, f prime of 1 <clears throat> equals 4. See, my left and right derivative equaled each other. I was continuous at that point. Therefore, the derivative will exist at that point. You can take that and you can take that to the bank. You can graph that if you wanted. You can see all piecewise functions are not differentiable at those points. It all boils down to, is it continuous? If it's continuous, if the left and right derivatives equal each other, bada bing, bada boom, your derivative exists. Last page here. Finding points of discontinuity. This is pretty simple stuff, okay? You don't need your calculator for number six. This is a rational function. What were the only troublesome issues we ever had with rational functions? Okay, we had issues at vertical asymptotes and holes. And note, those were always domain issues. Where did my domain issues for rational function happen? When the denominator could equal zero. Well, my denominator, I have a hole at two, and I know I have a hole at two because I can see I have that same factor in the top. So I'm not continuous, okay? Not continuous at I'm going to say x equals negative 2. I'm going to say there's a hole there. And I'm going to say I'm not continuous at x equals negative 4 because I have a vertical asymptote there. And if I have a hole or a vertical asymptote, those are discontinuities. Therefore, my derivative will not exist. It is not differentiable. Therefore, not differentiable at those two points, okay? The next one we got here, 
The next one we got here is f of x equals uh, the cubed root of x plus 1 squared. Okay, remember, you can type this in as x plus 1 raised to the 2 thirds power if you don't like that whole root deal. And when you look at your graph, whoa, what is going on there? My slopes are getting steeper and steeper and steeper as I zoom in closer and closer. The right side's going to positive infinity, the left side's going to negative infinity, therefore I have a cusp at x equals, hmm, wonder where it is, negative 1, therefore not differentiable. Okay, in the last one here I have a cubed root. Remember when you first grabbed those <clears throat> in L2, they were those sideways looking S's, and when I go sideways looking S on that little rascal, what happens is tangent lines come across, and for a split second, it gets perfectly vertical, and then it comes out. So what do I see? I am not differentiable at, hmm, where is that vertical tangent? I wonder where it is at x equals 2, and my reason is because there's a vertical tangent. And that's why, and now you have all the tools you have to do section 3.2. There will be a test coming up at the end of this week. Have a good day.